Hey there, can you hear me? I was having some issues just a second ago, but it seems to have, I see, I see level going to the, uh... hey Bonnie, Ed, Keith, AJ, let's see who else, Jim, good to see you. We're safe and sound, and uh, it was, uh, it wasn't, it was interesting because a pretty big show of force. Um, I got a haircut yesterday. Yay. Uh, but not near. So what they did was they kind of parked everything pretty far away and they were ready to go. But it wasn't a very big protest. They've been doing them all over L.A. and they've been spreading them out into the suburbs. Um, and uh, um, so um, anyway, it was it was interesting. There were some people that were getting snarky on uh, on Twitter about my neighborhood and a specific restaurant, I guess, had some thugs out front to kind of discourage any kind of trashing of the neighborhood. Our neighborhood is not, there's not a whole lot of um, uh, fancy boutiques or anything like that. <laughs> it's mostly like... It's pretty boring stuff. Like, if I were to walk through the stores, it would be there's a computer repair shop, there's two pool supply shops, there's a, a smoke shop, there's nail salons. I mean, it's pretty blue collar, and there are no there's no jewelry stores. There's there's a little liquor store. It's pretty uh, uh, it's pretty it's pretty minimalistic. A couple you know some restaurants, and uh, it's trying to you know, kind of come up a little bit, lot nicer places, but it's, uh, yeah, I have a friend, uh, that lives in the suburbs of Chicago. He works for the city and, uh, from high school and hit, their whole neighborhood got hit with tagging and all sorts of nasty stuff on their garage doors and stuff like that. But that's fairly easy to fix. But yeah, I mean, I guess the idea is What's the point of protesting in the city, in the inner cities, or in the cities, um, and just destroying the city? So, I mean, I remember the '94 riots in LA. Was it '94, '92? I think. Let's see, it might have been '92 because it might have been before Alex was born. But I, I think we had a lot of friends. Yeah, and then it was after that '94. The riot between the riots and the earthquake in '94. A lot of our friends moved to Nashville. Uh, so there was a huge group of L.A. people that moved to Nashville back in the mid-90s. Um, and that's probably why you have decent coffee shops. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, what else have we got going on? So, so today I'm going to talk about chord progressions. Um, I, I, ha I didn't really prepare any, um, any diagrams or anything that I can put in here uh, in my screen, you know, different screens. But... Um, Yeah, everybody says. And Bruce, I, I'm, I uh, saw the plans. Um, see, on the Discord site, do I have that open now? Um, uh, you posted the build, the CBG, Cibar, Cigar Box Guitar, if you're wondering what CGB stands for, and that is right there. And, uh, yep. I could see. So those are those are PDFs or docs. I love what you call it the Straley signature model. <laughs> That's hilarious. So people could order that then, right? Do I get a royalty? <laughs> um, yeah, it's funny because yeah, I uh, I've never even thought about like if Fender came to me and said, "Hey, we want to do a signature model. What would it be?" I mean, I'm like, I I I don't know. If I had any uh, any idea what the perfect strat is, because I, you know, I just <laughs> they probably should do a Squire Straley model or something like that. Uh, you know, that would be my perfect guitar. You know, my perfect signature one is that one that anyone could afford. Um, and then I would have them give a bunch to schools. Of course, they just get trashed, and there'd be all these crappy Straley guitars out there. <laughs> 
but uh, Leo's in the house. AJ's in the house. Um, so we're going to talk about we're going to talk about chord progression. Uh, it's interesting because I taught a lesson. Um, was it last week? I taught a lesson last week online. I've uh, got one student, <laughs> so, uh, and he's in London, and um, he uh, he's uh, an aspiring pop artist. Let's say we'll see. We'll see. Um, I don't know. He might be watching. Are you out there watching, student? Um, but he, he wanted me, he had recorded a song a while ago when he was younger and had kind of a little boy voice. And um, he wanted uh, me to show him how to play it because he didn't know how to play it. And you know me, I'm always trying to figure out, well, let's t make it a teachable moment. I hate, you know, my kids, my kids grew up with that, right? It's like, hey, daddy, can you help me do this? I'm like, well, let's learn how to do this. Or, you know, if I was going to, you know, if we were going to go see the trains over at Griffith Park or something like that, let's like learn about trains and let's make it, you know, not just climbing on trains, but let's learn what these parts are called and things like that. So, um, so what I did with him was, and it's something that really is a phenomenal skill to have, skill to have is I kind of try to teach him how to figure out, um, chords or figure out songs for himself. And so what I did was I, you know, it's hard. That's a hard thing to teach somebody. But there are tricks. Um, and so when um, when we we did it, actually, it took him about, we started working our way through the song. And it really was, it's a pop song, so it was the same progression over and over again. The verses and the choruses and the bridges, all the same chords. So, you know, right away, that makes it real easy. It's not like we were trying to figure out Stairway to Heaven or something like that. So, um and a situation like that with like Stairway to Heaven, you're really, I would chop that up into four or five lessons because it's really, that song in particular has got sections. Like learn that first, you know. And now I'm going to have to take that down. <laughs> there'll, be a, there'll be a gap right there. <laughs> but um, there's, uh, you know, you would learn that first section the first week. I would teach that first section the first week and then it would go into the strumming section. You know, whatever that was. Um, uh, but it's been forever since I've taught it or played it. Um, no, we're standard tune. Standard tune. Yeah, I'm done with that yet. I, I don't have that much to teach on it. Sorry, uh, it's not my forte. Um, but um, we did do. Did we do three, four lessons on it? Right? Yeah, we did four lessons. We did intro to Dad Gad. We did um, uh, some chords in Dad Gad. We did some pen diatonic scales and dad get and we did uh, pentatonic scales and kind of a recap so that was what we did the last four lessons so what i'm going to talk about now is chord progressions um so that wouldn't be um um we that wouldn't wouldn't necessarily be something i would talk well with what we talked about in dad gad with uh, breaking everything down to basic major and minor chords is definitely going to come into play today um, so you, you can, of course, apply anything I teach you today to dad get to. So sorry about that, Leo. <laughs> yeah, let's move forward. Yeah, sorry. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say on dad get, really, to be honest. I mean, it's, it's you know, particularly dad get. Um, I feel like and any tuning that's not an open chord tuning, like open G or open D, um, it's basically the best thing you can do is to experiment and then have a piece of paper handy in case you figure something out really cool and you want to tab it out. Um, and what I do, what I did for years with students, you don't, I mean, now you can print up tab paper. Uh, but what I did for years with students was I would, I would write out tab on just regular notebook paper and I would draw, I would draw on the left, I would draw a one with a circle around it. Go to one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, like something like that. And that would be tab across the page there. The top, the one would be the first string and the six would be the sixth string. So I would do that for years before I, you know, because I didn't want to be buying books of tab paper when I was teaching. I just used notebook paper. 
because it was so cheap. Uh, but now you can just print it up on your computer. Um, and so that's the that's the real. Ultimately, the 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 bookends on that lesson, I think, would be that um, would be that you experiment a lot and just mess around and try to come up with something. If it sounds good to you, it sounds good to you, and that kind of plays into what we're going to talk about too. Um, so my my student in London, he um, uh, he uh, he actually figured out the song by himself, um, and I gave him some tools, and I'm going to give you these tools, and we're going to talk about chord progressions. Um, and we're going to talk about inside progressions and outside progressions, you know, chords that are inside the key and outside the key and all that kind of stuff. And there's, there's two ways to look at chord, you know, chord, studying chord theory or chord progression theory. Um, one is to not understand it so it makes it easier to figure out songs, which is how we're, what we're going to talk about at first. The other thing is to forget it when you go to write a song, because if it works for you, I mean, if it works for you to play... And who was it that mentioned it may have been, uh, shoot, it wasn't a veto. It may have been Ab, A-B, and I don't see A-B here. But he said, like, Carly Rae Jepsen song had, like, this, the flat nine and, the, you know, the sharp one or whatever in the melody. It was in Jeff Major. And I'm, I'm like, well, you could just, it would be hard to play the flat nine on a major chord in a pop song and sell it. But if you were coming from another chord that was a substitute for a chord, then you can. So, um when you run up against a chord you don't know in a progression when you're trying to figure out something, then that's when you, you, you kind of can go to these outside chords. And we're going to talk about that. Um, but basically what I did with my student was I, and I'm going to ask you some questions and you can answer. Um, how many notes do we have per octave on the guitar or in, on the piano? How many notes are there per octave? And I took a sip. Yep, exactly. 12 notes per octave. Jim, Jim, take a sip. Leo, take a sip. Now everybody's just going to write 12 so they can take a sip. <laughs> Bonnie, take a sip. Not fair. You were cheating. You're sitting right next to you. Looked at Jim's answer. <laughs> or Jim looked at yours and typed faster. <laughs> um, I always looked at girls. <laughs> oh, hey, art, sir. Okay, so uh, how many total major chords do we have in uh, in Western music? Then answer that question. Of course, I'm not, I'm going to have a hard time. How many? You know, let's see, major chords. I'm going to type in major chords. <laughs> did not and answer your question answer my question there so I know that you're not answering a different question okay so how many major chords are there potential um, and I'm not talking about in a key I'm talking about yeah that's that's right there's three in a major key um, but <laughs> Bonnie and Bonnie and Jim are fighting in the chat live chat but and if we have 12 notes on the guitar and we talked about this when you learn a bar chord when you learn an open chord you've really learned one chord when you've learned a bar chord, you've learned 12. Yeah, Jim never says hi to Bonnie. You notice that too? Yeah. Yep, one for each note. So the answer is 12. So there's a total of 12 major chords. Yeah, three in diatonic though. Yeah, but we're talking, I'm talking about total in, in Western music. How many major chords can there be? So there's the answer is 12. Okay. Uh, the same answer, but I'm going to ask the question anyway. How many? How many minor chords are possible? Okay. So hopefully I spelled things right. Um, what's the total number of minor chords that you can have? Not in a key. I'm talking about total, like in, in Western music, on a piano, uh, and guitar. Um, let's see. I have, I have my B, B3. And the 
answer is yes. Leo, you're right. Art, you're right. 12. Okay. <laughs> no, not. Yeah, square, the square root of 40, 141. Okay, Jim. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Jim's getting all engineer on me. Um, okay. So we have a potential of 12 major chords and 12 minor chords. That's a total of 24. All right. Total of 24 major and minor chords in music. All right. So, what's my point? All right, my point is, that's your, that's your starting position, okay? But, um, but that's a lot. That's a lot of chords to fish for when you're trying to figure out a song, okay? So, <laughs> way to go, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce is like getting all yeah the engineers got all stick together where's where's Roger Roger you there <laughs> yeah my point is we have a lot to choose from okay now put that information to the side for just a second okay um, we're gonna come back to that and well no actually let me deal with this information right now okay in a diatonic key, now we're going to get to that diatonic question that, that Leo, you were answering, okay? In a diatonic key, how many major and minor triads total do we have? Okay, how many major triads are there in a, in a diatonic key? And how many minor triads are there in a diatonic key? Anybody? Total. Yeah, once an engineer, always an engineer. Jim. I'm waiting. <laughs> okay. So if we go, if you remember from what lesson was it we talked about it? Not quite seven. You're close, Leo. Because remember, the seven chord was a diminished triad. So we, when we talked about chord theory, remember when we made that chart? Uh, Ed, there's three majors. There are three major triads in a key. Um, I want the total number of major and minor triads in any major key. Hey, John, Jan, Jim, you're right. Exactly, six. So, for example, let's look at the key of G. Um, <laughs> this is the quiz. There is a quiz on this. <laughs> I need to get coffee mugs designed. I need to do that, like, tomorrow. <laughs> I need to do that today. And I can put them up on my... Uh, there, there. Uh, what is it? What is it? I, I need to figure out exactly that. There won't be a quiz on this. That's all it has to say. There won't be a quiz on this, and I don't think it needs quotes. It just needs to be black on a coffee mug. Black letters on a white coffee mug would be really cool. Or white on black, it doesn't really matter. You can. I think you can. If I do it through Teespring on on uh, through Google through YouTube, um, you can kind of make it any way you want it, any color, or whatever. Yep, Leo, perfect. Um, so. All right. Now, my point for this is that um, if you're trying to figure out a song, because this is a hard thing to do, if you're trying to figure out the chords of a song, you generally, um, if you can figure out what key you're in, you can, most songs stick to those six chords. Um, the, in, in, any, in any major key, the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord are major. The two chord, the three chord, and the six chord are minor. So I was just playing minor six. How many songs have this chord progression? Four, one, five. A 
million songs have that chord progression, okay? Uh, it's only four chords. I'm playing six, again, six, four, one, and five. Um, and so you don't need to know that yet. There's no quiz on that <laughs> yet, okay? I'm laying the groundwork. Okay, so, but if you didn't know the song and you couldn't see my hands and you heard it, let's say you, you didn't even know the first chord, but you knew the key. Well, in the key of G, again, we have six major and minor chords. Look like I said seven, six, six, there we go. Um, it would be G, A minor, B minor, C, D, and E minor, okay? And so having six chords to choose from, and we're gonna, I'm gonna help you figure out how to, or help you learn how to figure out what key you're in, okay? A song is in. Um, Having six chords to choose from is a lot easier than having 24 chords to choose from, right? You're basically getting rid of 75% of the possibilities. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't going to be a chord outside the key. All bets are off, ultimately. But you can make an assumption that's probably 80% of the time true that if you figure out a song's key, you can whittle down the chords in that song to six chords, and it'll probably be the one of, the next chord. And every every time it changes chord, you got to figure out that chord. So that you know it'll be one of those six chords. So that saves you a lot of time because if you're like, I know the song's in G, I can go, okay, what are the chords in G? Okay, I hear the, I hear this, but I go, okay, G. No, A minor. No, B minor. No, D. No. I mean, C, no, D, no. Oh, that's the first chord, E minor. Okay, it took me a minute to get there, right? I went through six chords to get there. Um, but I didn't have to go through 24 chords to get there. Because if I had gone, oh, okay, well, is it F? No. F minor? No. Is it F sharp? No. F sharp minor? No. Is it G? No. G minor. <laughs> you know, literally, we play 24 chords until I got to the E minor. Okay? And even then, up there, it probably wouldn't sound anything like this, and you probably wouldn't even recognize it. Um, so I can tell you're not, you're not chatting because you're actually listening and absorbing what I'm saying. Okay. Now, the cool thing about this is, like I said, it really, really simplifies what you're doing. Okay, well, then what's the next chord in this progression? So, you hear this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is it G? No. A minor? No, B minor, no, let's see, no, is it C, oh yeah, okay, all right, cool, so now, I only had to play four chords to get to the, the next chord in the progression, the next chord is this, so is it, okay, so I'm, I know, I got it right, C, four chord, and then, well, let me see, what's the, I'll just try G, oh, that's it, okay, cool, all right, what's the next chord? Okay, so it's not going to be G, it changes. So is it A minor? No. Kind of sounds like them, but not. that's too sad. Okay. No, that's the chord before. Doesn't mean you can't, couldn't be C, but it is. Oh, there it is. Okay, now you figured out the chord progression. It's E minor, C, G, D. So instead of having to go through 24 chords to try to find it, you've narrowed it down. Um, and as you're figuring it out, if the chord is changing, like when we start on E minor and you know there's a new chord, you know the new chord's not E minor, so you can even eliminate it down to five chords, okay? Does that make sense? So it's a, it's, it's a very easy way to give you a start on trying to decipher a chord, uh, a progression in a song, somebody's song, okay? And again, we're talking about here the, the half of the, of the story, which is, figuring out songs. The other half of the story is writing songs. When you figure out songs, it's helpful to know theory. It's not, it doesn't hurt to know theory to write songs, but technically when you're writing, there are no rules. If it works for you, that's all that matters. Now, if it doesn't, if you're playing a song and it's just... I, who says that doesn't work? I mean, I've known a lot of punk songs that kind of did that. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it's, it doesn't, you know, a song doesn't have to obey any rules. 
Although a lot of times, I mean, I always, I always use the Beatles as an example. I feel like they were, they were always looking for, you know, they would literally take a bus across Liverpool because they heard about a kid that had a good, knew a chord that they didn't know. That Paul, John and Paul would do that. And that's a part of how they, I think they came to know George was he, he knew like a B7 chord or something like that. And they, they a B7 chord, what's that? Wait, what? And so they took a bus across town and <laughs> to learn one chord. Um, and the Beatles would often like use a chord and it would be different than everything else. And like it wouldn't, it wouldn't be the right in the key, but it would work. And then people will come along later and go, well, that worked because of this and the, and the, you know, the, the voice leading movement of this and blah, blah, blah. And they come in and they explain why it works. And it's like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense, whatever. Um, and uh, <laughs> so um, anyway, that's, that's, uh, uh, um, that's going to come later. Okay, we're going to get to these ancillary chords. Right now we want to concern ourselves with just a basic chord, pro uh, chord progression with six six chords all right now okay so how do we figure out what key a song is in <laughs> well i guess you could you could always look up you i'm sure there's somebody in fact if you go to the wikipedia if it's a famous song um if it has its own wikipedia page it probably says let me look up let's say hotel california on wikipedia and see if it says what key it's in it may even say the tempo hotel california Wiki. There it is. I don't. I had the album, but yeah, there's. The, they have a little forty-five there. Uh, I'll have to do a word search for key. Yeah. Oh, interesting. When they first recorded the riff, became recording vocal. It was found to be too high in the key in Henley's voice. So Fedler. Uh, Felder progressively lowered the key from E minor, eventually settling on B minor. That's why they... So they're basically, you know, like you know, they're playing in B minor, but they're playing in E shapes, E minor shapes. Um, and we'll talk about minor keys too, minor chord progressions. Um, but, uh, but, and that will have different, some different tendencies. Um, but uh, it did say in the meat of the article, it didn't say on the right-hand side about the information on it. Sometimes I've seen it over here on the right, uh, where it talks about the format, the year recorded, the studio, record plant. I've been in there, recorded at record plant. Um, yeah, I knew that record was made. There are a lot of records made at record plant. Wait. Oh. No. Yeah, no, they, it was the L.A. one, I think. Yeah, the Los Angeles one. Okay. So, anyway. Yes. Uh, Leo, that is the, um, generally, you could say, um, but like that chord progression I was just playing. First chord is E minor. I mean, you could say that song's in E minor. I might say that it's in E minor. Uh, but the diatonic major key that it's in is the key of G, right? So, what I say usually is... Leo is, and this is this also doesn't always work, but um, and generally, probably, um, I think I saw a website that talked about this that had did like a math, like a um, they they took like all the songs <laughs> and said, What's the first chord in most songs? And like 70% of the time, it was the one chord or something like that. Um, and like the next most common was, I think, the minor six. And then the next most common was the four chord, something like that. So, um, but uh, in that case, it was the E minor chord. So I always say, what chord does the song want to end on? All right. So when we're finally done with the song, you're going to go to the end. That sounds resolved to me. Okay, although it may not be fit the mood of the song. If the song's kind of a sad song, you might not want to end. You might want to end on the first chord. And that would sound like this. Yeah, you know, it just depends. But oftentimes, if a song starts on C, It's in the 
key of G, so you, you, it's the chord it wants to end on. Do you see that? Does that make sense? Um, so that's sometimes hard to hear. Now, to simplify even that is just try to find the root of it, the bass note. What is the bass playing? And, uh, and Leo mentions a pedal note. Yeah, I think that's what you mean, the bass note, whatever the bass note is. So you say you don't know, I don't know, you know, because it could be like, it could be, the song could be in G. Or, you know, it could be. It could be up a half step, okay? So I got my G7 capo here. Plug a plug a plug a plug a plug a plug a. <laughs> so much free advertising for giving me one capo, no, two capos at the NAMM show. Uh, but they did give me something to give to Rick Beato, which was pretty cool. He was like, really? They want me to have this capo? <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, so if the song's like. wants to end on whatever note this you know it's then you're in that could be your root and so you're in the key of a flat or you could take a g sharp not g sharp's not a very common key a flat's more common key okay um so then from there you can try to determine hey gary we're talking about chord progressions and trying to learning how to figure out figure out chord progressions um and the other thing is with the internet age the skill is less necessary because People, you, there's, there's, you can enter Hotel California chords and lyrics PDF and hit return and you'll get some chart that has the lyrics with the chords written over it. Sometimes they're right. I would say probably 15% of the time the chords are right. Um, if it's a very simple song, it's probably 85% of the time. But I've seen so many, so many that are wrong or oversimplified. Um, which is fine. We talk about simplifying chord progressions. Um, if it makes it easier to, for you to get out there and start performing, then great. If you have to learn exactly what they're doing, then that's gonna, it's going to take you a long time. The idea is to, is, to, is to be able to entertain. At least, if no one else, yourself. So, um, and, and for me, sometimes entertaining, entertainment is trying to figure out exactly, you know, exactly note for note string for string what the original guitar player did that that's like i that's better for me than a good netflix movie i mean i'm just i'll be listening and getting each note and uh so so that's entertainment too but but if you really want to simple you know if you want to simplify a song and be able to perform it or sing it with somebody else or teach it to your kid or teach it to a student or whatever um Oh, nice. <laughs> Thanks. I'll check that out. Did you were you able to get the vocals in the center? Because I, I when I listened to your uh, L COVID libation shuffle, um, it was uh, the vocals were only in the left. Hey, Pepper. Oh, G Sus is here. Where's G Sus? Oh, oh, G <laughs> Gary. Um, <laughs> Also, uh, on a completely unrelated side note, talking about Beatles and chords, um, there's a great video. If I can, I wonder if I could find it on YouTube. I saw it a while ago. It's really, really cool. So it's a video where a guy has all these musicians sit around. First chord of Hard Day's Night. And uh, yeah, where is it? Yeah, here. it's really interesting. Yeah, it's I think somebody that was like a that was like a class, and he was like a professor, and uh, you know I you know I always did a cheater chord where just play a, a G seven sus like this. Which is a fun chord. It's not right, but it sounds right. Uh, G sus seven or G seven sus, and it's uh, three five three five three three. So it's a bar chord. It's been a hard, 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 hard. What's what is it? I see that. What is it? Ah, my brain.
I say I should be. I'll be applying my lesson right now. Um, hey, I went. I got my hair cut too yesterday. This is my uh, my my local neighborhood uh, hair cutter. Uh, just bar the barber around the corner. Literally, I can throw a rock and hit the building from my house practically. Um, and and a perfect, in fact, Hard Day's Night is a perfect song example of a song that doesn't really follow the key necessarily. It kind of moves around a little bit. But um, the uh, but the video was had all of these he had all these people play on stage. You know, like, okay, you play this, I'll play this, you play that, and everybody on the count of three. And I don't even think he told him what chord it was. Um, because there's a lot of debate at, and the Beatles and George Martin, they didn't even know. I mean, they just hit this chord and then, you know, everybody was doing their own thing and they layered some stuff. And, and so there's piano on it, there's bass on it, there's acoustic guitar, I think, and electric guitar on it. And it was like, what's the exact voicing of what everybody did? You know, this is kind of a, a kind of a takedown of it. It's kind of a fun chord. And you play it and everybody goes, it's a hard day's night. You know, they go right into it. Well, <laughs> everybody in my generation does. <laughs> It's, we're losing that. The kids today, they don't, they don't know that song at all. It, it never hardly gets played at all. So, um, so um, but finding out what, like Leo was saying, the, the, the bass note or the lowest note of the first chord can oftentimes uh, tell you what key a song is in or the root note of, um, the first note of, uh, the root note of the last chord. Like if you, were to end the song, what would that chord be? And, you know, if the song... There's our last chord, okay? And so you, maybe you don't know if it's a major or minor chord, you just know if it's that. Um, so then you can assume that she... Okay, so now remember when we talked about um, chord theory... We, uh, we started out with a C triad, and then we, we used the C major scale. We wrote two octaves of C major scale, and we did C triad, then D triad, and a, a triad built on E, and a triad built on F, and G, and A minor, or A, and B, and we ended up with a bunch of different chords, okay? Now, if we do that in the key of G, um, so we'll just be in the key of G, we end up with... Basically, like I said, the six chords we're going to end up with are G in order, A minor, B minor, C, D, and E minor. Okay, you could also call this, uh, you know, a one, two minor, three minor, four, five, six progression. That's not necessarily a progression. That's just the order of chords. Um, but if you want to write a song in um, G, you know, and you... You can start with these chords, and you would have a song that would be, you know, say I, I um, and the most common chord is going to be one. Um, oh, nice. <laughs> uh, you know, most common chord is one, four is very common, five is very common, six is very common, two is then the most common after that, and then the three chord is probably the least common. Now, if you're wondering what about the seventh chord, um, the in this case would be F sharp minor or F sharp diminished. The more common chord you would use almost every time if you wanted F sharp in the bass would be D over F sharp, right? Um, so if you want to do a descending chord progression from from G down, so I'm playing G, D over F sharp, E minor. B minor you could do A minor G now I would probably change that but that's a pretty pure if I were to make it even more pure I would do uh, well see that would be a that would be a minor 7 flat 5 so that's technically in the key of G uh, but that's a 7th chord and I, did, I don't want to bring in 7th chords into this yet okay I'm keeping it real simple okay so but but D over F sharp is pretty common. E minor. Now there I might use instead of D, okay, because I just had G, D, I mean. D over F sharp, E minor. I might go E minor over D. 
which is just the top four strings open, to C, to G over B, right? Uh, A minor. And then you go to the D. So it's one chord, five with a second in, or third in the bass, six chord, six with a five in the bass, four chord, root with a third in the bass, two chord, five chord. And that would be a really nice descending chord progression that's been used in thousands of songs. I even know, like Paul Balash taught that, uh, he would do that while he was praying. He would just do, he'd be praying between songs. You go back to the over, I mean, some, I'm sure some of you know what song it is. songs. Um, yes, I would be more likely to use, oh, you're saying three major. Yes, we're not, well, I'm not there yet though. I'm keeping it simple. I'm keeping it pure diatonic at this moment, James, but that's, you're exactly, it's, you're talking about three, uh, three major, a three minor. Yeah, you could use the minor. It's, it does, it's a, it's a leading chord. It's kind of the five of the six chord. Every, pretty much every chord in any diatonic key has a five chord. The five chord in the key of G is, is a D chord. And what that means is you just count up five notes, but like um, uh, the A minor five would be the E minor. But I could go E seven, like if I want to go. That's really gonna to want to go to A minor. You're not basically creating kind of a circle of fits. Now, it, I've, three minor works, but you're right. I, but, but three major would be stronger lean because you have that. But we're, that's out of our key. So right now we're kind of keep trying to keep it simple. So this chord progression, just so you know, what I'm playing is G, G, and then D over F sharp, then E minor. And then I played E minor over D, and then I played C, and then I played G over B. So you can see the bass line is descending. Then I played A minor, and then the D kind of turned me back around to the top. Okay, so that was the first place where, um, yeah, in Christ alone, you're right. That song uses the, the very, very common. And you can play it several different ways. Um, yeah, the, I wouldn't probably play it like that. That's really hard, in my opinion. I would play it like this with the thumb. Okay, so it's thumb on the bottom string, second fret. Open, open and then play a regular D chord. Or the other thing you can do is just do this and have D2, which is the open E string is open. So it would be um, D2 over F sharp. That's, you know, you can play it. Even if it says D over F sharp, you can play D2 over F sharp. It's not gonna offend anybody. Um, but that would be, yeah. Oh, I totally understand, Gary. Um, yeah, and that one's, this one's a little easier, I think, the one I just wrote. Um, and if that E is really bothering you, you can mute it, too. You don't have to play the E. But, yeah, this one would be, for me, hard. Dennis! Eat a peach. Tom streams every day. Oh. Where's Eat a peach? I didn't see Eat a peach. Oh, sorry. I love the lessons. This is the first time I've been able to catch up Tom live. Hey, Eat a peach. Awesome. Are you in the South? I think at Eat a Peach, I think of, uh, Mar is it Marshall Tucker? No, it was, uh, is that Marshall Tucker Band or was that Allman Brothers? Allman Brothers Eat a Peach, yeah. So we're not, we're not doing open, we're not doing slide lesson today. Okay, so now again, I, the chord progression, I could have done a little more pure, E minor to D to C to B minor, A minor to D. Um, but I, the G over B just is nicer going, you know, it's the same kind of thing from the G the E minor, that exact same passing chord kind of sound. Okay. Um, and so anyway, that's just, um, I was, I only brought all of this up because to accommodate and to talk about the seven chord, which we're not really going to talk about much. Okay. So let's talk about some qu common chord progressions. Okay. 
Um, the bluegrass jam that I, I do is one, four, one, five, basically. Um, if you tuned in Saturday when Alex and I were jamming, we did that progression a lot. It was G, C, G, D, which is one, four, one, five. Okay? Now, part of the, the advantage to thinking about chord progressions um, and thinking about chords as numbers is it makes it really easy as you learn all the keys, you don't have to learn them all at once, you, but you learn one or two at a time, and then you've got to, you'll eventually get most of the ones you need. Uh, but if you learn, you know, the song is one, four, one, five. Um, then it's like, oh, it's a one, four, one, five progression. Okay, in the key of E, that would be the one chord's E. Because I broke it down, the first progression, I broke it down to numerical values or the Nashville numbering system. Um, and it goes way back before Nashville was even even a, a, a neighborhood, <laughs> even a building. Uh, but basically, it was, you know, we, I would do it with hymns from the 1500s. They would do, uh, in fact, it was called figured bass. And uh, back in, you know, the 1500s, um, you could see music written that way with just numbers. And it was exactly for the purpose of be, the same reasons the Nashville uh, players use it is so that they could change the key to fit the singer on the fly. So if you just go, oh, it's a one chord, it's a four chord, it's a five chord, it's a six chord, everybody knew what that meant uh, because everybody had a basic understanding of, of chord theory and all their keys and all the chords and all the keys. And once you had that understanding, you could read a number system. And that's the same thing with Nashville. Um, so they say, oh, yeah, let's do it in the key of A. It's a one, four, one, five progression, and they know exactly what that is. Okay. Can I just say, huh? Oh, Gary, I can't believe you didn't, you didn't, you hadn't done that. Oh, you're talking about Allman Brothers? Huh? You got to check out Allman Brothers. They're <laughs> freaking amazing. Southern rock stuff, man. Some of that stuff. I mean, particularly Allman Brothers and Marshall Tucker Band are really are great. Uh, some of them, like Molly Hatchet, eh, you know, hopefully Eda Peach is, well, Eda Peach wouldn't be a member of Molly Hatchet. But they had like 17 guitar players on stage. <laughs> just seemed like that sometimes. Uh, I had a friend that played like, you know, in the late iteration, a later iteration, like a 70s iteration of Black Oak, Arkansas. So, um, exactly, exactly, James. Yeah, I know. They, they, Nashville didn't come up with it, but, it, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure the guy that came up with it in Nashville had no idea that they did, that Bach did it. You know, it's not like, he's like, well, this is basically just, it, we'll put it, you know, in fact, but long before I'd ever heard of the Nashville numbering system, I had musicians tell me, oh, just play the one chord to the four chord. It's just a one four progression. Like there's a lot of R&B songs that are just one, like uh, um, Knock on Wood, isn't that like... I mean, all the Blues Brothers songs, are one four, one four, a million R&B songs from the 60s and early 70s were just one and four. Um, so you say that and you go, okay, let's do uh, one and four in G, you know. Um, and sometimes, now this is a funny one, though. Uh, I didn't know for the longest time uh, I would hear someone say, oh, just play rhythm changes. And I'm like, what? Rhythm changes? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to play rhythm guitar. What are the changes? Yeah, rhythm changes. Well, yeah, but what are they? <laughs> and I'm like, they wouldn't. I'm like, it took me forever. It's like, and then they took, oh, here, here's a chart. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know. And then we go to. Was that right? Yeah. Something, you know, basically. Uh, and <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was the. It was the changes to I Got Rhythm. Because so many bebop songs use I Got Rhythm, I Got Rhythm, I Got Rhythm, who can ask for anything? Something like, you know, 
it was, and I, to be honest, to this day, I don't even, I couldn't sit down and play rhythm training. All I know is the, the bridge, so it's an A-A-B-A form, which is a very old school form. Um, the bridge starts on, if you go up three, holds, you know, whole steps, or three, I'm sorry, two whole steps, but if you go up three scale tones in the key, so in this case, I was in the key of A, which is still not quite. I don't know. But if you count up three, then you, you play a major chord, um, a seventh chord, and that's that's the five of the five of the five of the five. So then you go to that, and then... <laughs> so I don't want to confuse you, but this... But it's crazy. So, uh, these days. Oh, is that you? But, but the, the song, I think it was Indiana. Um, not back home again in Indiana, but the song, I think it was a song called Indiana. And the bebop players would use those chord progressions and they'd write, you know, Charlie Parker and Miles Davis and those guys, Coltrane, they would write a new melody over it. Um, and, uh, um, and so that's, you know, like I think Don Lee made. Uh, It's not quite, I don't know. Uh, so I'm not a huge, you know, like big jazz guy, but, um, but I know that, um, a lot, you know, like I said, the, the, when they said rhythm changes, they meant the changes to, I got rhythm. And then they'd say, Oh, and the key B flat. And I'm like, well, give me some changes. You're saying to play changes, but I don't know what changes. So how many ways can you play a D chord? Um, Oh, you mean the one D chord this way? Well, you could play it with these three fingers you could play it like this with barring the first finger you could play it with these three fingers um, but as far as D chords up and down in the neck I mean I could think there's infinite voicings I think um, you know especially when you get into when you get into different um, when you get into different uh, voicings you can do it a lot of different ways too so I don't know if that helps um, oh, oh, Greg, oh, these days, oh, the song Greg Allman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So, um, I probably got off on a tangent there. But, um, so that, that's one way we can play through it, a, a chords in the key of G, okay? Um, another very, very, very common progression, and I find that Decades can often have progressions. We've talked about this before. Uh, but if, if there was a defining progression of the 50s, particularly the second half of the 50s, um, it probably would have been a 1, 6, 4, 5. So we talked about this with some of the strumming things. But... Uh, you know, but even more recent song, more, not recent, but, you know, Every Breath You Take, which was an A flat originally, um, was uh, also that kind of that progression. Did a little different, you know. Um, uh, funny Little Thing Called Love, is that right? No, that's not what, but uh, trying to think there's, but a lot of times when, oh, uh, uh, Zeppelin, what's that one, uh, the Zeppelin? That's oh, it. Uh, I mean, it's such a great guitar. I'm not sure how he did it, but uh, that's a one six four five progression. Uh, that again, it was they were trying to kind of get a '50s sound. Which, if you guys remember, so many of you were around in the '70s. The '50s came back really big. I remember we would have in junior high, we'd have '50s days, and everybody wear jeans and a t-shirt, and they put. You know, like a box of candy cigarettes in their sleeve, which kids can't even have candy cigarettes at school anymore, which is hilarious. My kids loved candy cigarettes. Oh my gosh. They would walk around, it would be like, <sighs> like none of them smoke. I don't know what people thought, but it's just funny. I mean, I love candy cigs, cigs, cigs as a kid, ciggies. So a one, six, four, five progression would be one, six, four, five, and I don't even need to put minors because we're gonna assume that two, three, six are minor and one, four, five are major. But in the key of G, that would be one, or G, E minor, C, and D. 
like that, all right? So that's very 50s. I know, I know. <laughs> it sounds doo-wop, exactly. It's very doo-wop, you know. Um, Now, I feel like in the 90s, like with one of the more common progressions, same chords, just in a different order. Um, I'm playing E minor, C, G, D. And I'm using the hip hop groove that we talked about. That's a hard groove to teach without being in front, actually in the room with you. But that was a six, four, one five progression. So in this E minor, uh, E minor, C, G, and D. But you also might use D um, over F sharp to give you some momentum back to that first chord. And this would be a perfect example. It was kind of the chord I was using at the beginning of the video, or progression I was using at the beginning of the video. It's an example of the first chord isn't the key. I mean, technically, yes, you could say this is in the key of E minor since the, it's E minor is the relative minor key to G major. There's no quiz on this at the end of the week. Take a sip. That's one of our drinking game rules. If I say there's no quiz at this, we get the celebratory sip. Hey, B Bacco Cat's here. B Kitty. <laughs> B Kitty, funny. That's his rapper name, or her rapper name. I don't know. B I'm assuming, I don't know. Is B, B Kitty a guy or a gal? I'm not sure. Um, so... Oh, I'm touching my face too. Yeah, often called, is it called the oldies progression? Yeah, it was, yeah. I mean, if you said oldies progression, that's the first one that would come to mind. Um, like I said, the, the, for me, like the R&B progression was um, oftentimes one, there's so many songs that had one four thing. So in the key of G, that would be G to C. However, G to C doesn't sound particularly R&B. It's like... Right? It sounds country, you know, it's like... It's a little bit better there, but if you make them G7 and C7, then all of a sudden you kind of get this, and, th and those two technically aren't in the same key, because a C7 chord has a B flat in it, and the third of a G chord is B, so that technically, but if you go, but, but you could still call it a 1-4 progression, but you would say, you could say one, oops, I'm going to use Roman numerals now. One, that's where Roman numerals come in handy. One, seven, and four, seven. Okay, that's why you see Roman numerals. So you can have two numbers against each other uh, like that. And that would be G7 to C7. All right? And that would sound like this. Right? And a lot of times I think the right-hand groove will also kind of send you there. You know, if I went, you might not think R&B, but if I go, you're going to think more R&B. If I did, you might think, think country swing or something like that, but you wouldn't think necessarily R&B. So the groove can also change the, um, can definitely, and is a big, huge part of the, uh, the fingerprint of the sound that you're creating. Um, the chord progression is also... Oh, shoot, did I do it wrong? Oh, respect, I'm sorry. I thought <laughs> James was, yeah, that's right. Respect is also knock on wood. I think it's, uh, let's see what is it? Is it? No, is it? Was it? Uh, what did it, no, it was, uh, it was a... Yeah, it was like... I'm great on electric, on acoustic, it doesn't quite work as well. Just a little bit, yeah. There's so many. Soul, that's Soul Man, yeah, exactly. I think so. Because I'm Soul. I forget. I don't remember the chords to Soul Man, but anyway, it could be just the one. 
How about, how's that new guitar? Oh, Bonnie. Oh, he asked you. Oh, B Kitty doesn't know about the new guitar. It was a fifth. They sent her, accidentally sent her a 59 Les Paul. Uh, they, bought, they sold it and bought a new house. <laughs> and I, I want to keep, we're, we're, we're coming to the end of the lesson because I, I don't want to get too far away. You know, I don't want to get to the ancillary chords yet. Okay. Um, and like I said, I really had no idea even this morning what I was going to teach on. So this is, I, but I will teach on this for a little while because that is, I love, for me, I'm, I'm you know, writing songs. Um, and so I'll, I'll give you an example. Now here's another song. Um, here's another progression. Okay. Um, uh, one, I'm, I'm going to use Roman numerals. It makes sense. One, because, because I can do the minor in there, six, five, and four. And I'm going to do it in the key of D and it's D. B minor, A, and G, okay? And this is a song I wrote. Um, and it was just kind of, I was messing around and I came up with this and it was, um, okay. Um, and the way I'm playing is kind of pseudo R&B feeling, uh, but in the, in the key of G that would be G to D to C. One, six, five, four. And that song's called Home to Mama that uh, Justin Bieber and Cody Simpson recorded that I wrote with Sam Hook, a uh, songwriter that I work with. So that said, um, so that's another G one. Um, so that was in G. That would be um, G E minor, D and C, and that's one six five four. Kind of just descending almost. And then, so that's another another progression. Um, let's see. You could do. Um, That, five, that four to one is always always a winner. To, you know, it's a kind of amen, right? Um, so I'm starting E minor to. So before we did the E, the uh, six to the four, to the one to the five. But this one we're going six to the to the uh, sorry six to the five, to the four, to the one. So basically, well, here's what's cool. I'm gonna show you something. Um, in fact, let's do this. We're, we're gonna do a little math thing, a little, little uh, uh, game. Um, and that was, yeah, amen cadence is four, one. Um, so that was E minor to D to C to G, all right? So that was uh, six, five, four, one, all right. That's the same progression I did before, except starting on the second chord of the progression. So the first one, the one progression was... Right? And then this one was... Um, okay, so here's, here's the cool little trick you can do. Is you can take a chord, very common chord progression and this is the key of G written there, but um, that let's take that 50s one uh, where we go G to E minor, C and D, right? And there's our, our there's our 50s progression. Okay. Now we could start that progression on E minor and do the same exact progression, E minor, C, D, and G. Okay, and that's kind of the... All I did was move everything over one, right? I could start that on C, start the same progression on C, go C, D, G, E minor. Oops, G, G E minor, bad, sorry. D, or I could start on D and go D, G, E minor, C. Okay, sorry, you can do a screenshot of that, but 
basically. It's the same chord progression starting on different chords. And I, you know, for the case, for the sake of simplicity, I can do a bar of each of those. So four beats, meaning a bar means four beats. So like, here's the first one. Okay, the other progression, starting on the second one there, E minor to C to D to G is. Thanks, Bruce. Okay. Then if we start that progression on C, go C, D, G, E minor, it sounds like this. Another, you, in other words, this is a great tool for writing. Like if you're looking for song, you know, progressions to write with, you can do this. And again, I'm keeping it real simple rhythmically by playing one bar of each chord. I'm gonna change that, but... Um Isn't that cool? Okay, now the reason I'm stopping and talking between these progressions is so that you get a reset on your brain. It's kind of like having a piece of cheese when you're about to taste another wine. Okay, now we're gonna to listen to the last progression, which started on the fourth chord in the original 50s progression. Um, but we're gonna go D to G to E minor to C. Let's see what that sounds like. I'm not hearing many songs in that one. That one didn't, didn't I touched my face so we can take a sip. Right, Gary? Um, I'm not hearing, no song is jumping to my head on that, but the other three totally did. But that, and that, in some ways that's good because that may mean, okay, I'm gonna write a song using this progression, the D to the G, E minor to C, okay? Now here's the thing I didn't do was I didn't do any syncopations. Like for example, I could do, um, I could change faster, I could go. into the field of songwriting here, okay? Here's the same progression starting on the E minor. Which is pretty cool. Here's the third progression, again, C, D, G, E minor. Now I might change that, like, and this is another thing you can do, you can go, if you're writing, there are no rules, like I said. I don't have to keep doing the same progression over and over again. It's not a pop song, so you don't have to do that. But I could go uh, C, D, E. Right? Um, so you don't necessarily have to, you know, loop the progression over and over again. If, if you hear something and you go, no, I want to sit on that chord, you're the songwriter, you can do whatever you want. But again, it's a, it's a great way to kind of tricking yourself into come up with new progressions. Okay, well, well we're gonna do something different. Okay, check this out. I love this trick. And I teach this to all the young songwriters I work with. I mean, so again, the G, E minor, C, D. That's, that's a pretty, you know, boring progression, right? But um, I, can, I can reverse these chords here and go E minor to G, C, D, right? And now I have a new progression. Um, I can reverse these two, D, C, and now I have a new progression. Well, let me write, let me carry these down. Carrying these down. Okay, there's a different progression too. Okay, well I can, I can reverse these two. I have D, G. Now these are gonna be, some of the, these are gonna be the same as what we've already done. But you can see how you could arrive at a new progression by just kind of flipping things around a little bit. Um, D minor, G, C. Now I'm flipping that again, and I get that. Okay, let me, let's me let listen to some of these, see if any of them are new. Um, so G, E minor, C, D is the kind of the standard 50s thing. But here's this, the next one is. Kind of cool. 
Okay, the next one where I crisscross the C and the D, now it's going E minor, G, D, C. Is... Uh, the next one was E minor. I flipped the middle two that time. This time, so I went. I flipped the G and the D. So we ended up with E minor, D, G, C. I think that one. And you could use these to create B sections or bridges or choruses or verses and things like that. Um, yeah, it's a great way to understand songs too. It's a great way to. To look at songs and go, oh, that's what they did. You know, now they aren't necessarily doing the flip flop thing that I'm doing to come up with it. They probably just went, oh, I'll play D and D, blah blah blah. Here's the last one is uh, okay. I flipped the E minor and the D, and I came up with D E minor G and C. And a lot of them start to repeat themselves. If you were to start at the second bar, you would be the same as the one above or whatever. But um, this is where again, where you can really kind of. And that's just using a very simple progression like this. We could take, um, a, and not that this isn't simple, but I could do more of a one, six, two, five. So we have e my, uh, G, E minor, A minor to D instead of C, okay? And that, that's a fairly common progression, particularly in jazz, if you would put sevenths after that, George, the reason it'd be G major, you know, major seven to a minor seven to a minor seven to a major, uh, um, uh, a dominant seventh. Um, I don't want to, no, no quiz on that at the end of the week. Cheers. But that two chord is, this two chord A minor here is a substitute, is a minor sub for the C chord, okay? So this, this could, this could be, basically all I did was I played the, the 50s progression, but instead of playing C, I used A minor, which is a sub, okay? A substitute. When I say sub, I mean a substitute. So now we can take this progression, we can do the X here, go, okay, E minor, to G, A minor to D. What does that sound like? Okay, um, we could do the crisscross here and we get E minor to G, uh, to D, A minor. Well, we could go back to the original progression, which was G, E minor, uh, D, you know, and we could do the crisscross there and have G, E minor, and then crisscross up here and it would be D and A minor. Okay, and so you, you know, you can do so many different variations. We're not gonna get into the possible variations, but. Um, so let's, this first one would sound like this. Next one would be. Am I getting texts? No. Okay. Um, E minor to G. Uh, the last one was G, E minor, D, A minor. Kind of weird. But you might be able to find, you know, if you if you find one that resonates and you can hear a melody over it, we, we're not going to necessarily talk about writing melodies. Um, I tend to work with people that write top lines, which means they write the lyrics and the melodies. I just kind of start like with Home to Mama. I sent this into the producer and they got it to Sam and Sam wrote something over it. And ended up being, I think I've got, I don't know. There was like, it's a, that's a whole other story, but I think it was uh, something like, um, last I looked, it was like 120 million spins on Spotify alone for that song. Uh, but I don't think it's up on Spotify anymore. It's interesting. Um, let's see if I can find it um, on YouTube. Um, Tim. It's probably been because there because see I there's a apparently a dispute on the royalties, so they can't they can't post it. But people have done a million covers of it. Yeah, this is probably not original. I'm not going to play it. Um, uh, but, wow, it's not loading. Weird. We're still good, though, right? Uh, 
Yeah, it's yeah, and I don't mean to. I'm not trying to be. Uh, thanks, uh, be kidding. I, I'm not trying to be um, uh, like talk over your heads. I'm just you know in some ways it's simple. Uh, the, so like, um, I might get my speakers whistling. I wish I knew what was causing that. It's been doing that a lot lately. I got some kind of ground thing or something. Um, all right, are you gonna play? Just playing. All right, so let me. See if it's even close. Yeah. So this has not been pitched. Sometimes it's because they're not supposed to be uploading these. Um, they've been pitched. But here's that that Bieber song. And it, it never really got finished. I don't know how it got released. But Sam only wrote a verse and a chorus. He, and it's, he did a great job. Sam's a really good songwriter. But he never wrote a second verse. And, um, and so it never... Um, it just, it's Cody sings one verse and Justin sings the other verse. I mean, they were touring together. That's how they became friends. So, um, but no, that squeaking sound is me. I, I don't, I mean, I could, I, I can turn off the speaker actually. Unless, tell me if you still hear it when I turn off the speaker. Because then it's then it's in the system, and if it's sent, if there's, it's being sent to you, that's bad because that might mean it also sends to my tracks. No, it's not sending to my tracks as I'm recording them. But I I, I think it's coming from my uh, um, my my uh, Apogee, but I'm not sure. Um, there may it may I don't think there's an update. It it just started doing it. So uh, for those that are new, Tom posted. Two other chat sessions about seven, six to seven months ago. For those who need Tom fix between lessons, search. Um, I got my coffee. Let's talk. Or got some coffee. Let's talk. Oh, like if you. Oh, those. Are, yeah, yeah. Those are really old. Yeah, I used to, uh, yeah. And one of the things Beth kind of said, well, why don't you try being consistent? So I figured doing every day would be consistent during the COVID thing, and and so sure enough, you know, we, we did. Um, what was it sixty two days in a row? I did it. So. Now I'm pretty much it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm planning on doing Friday. Um, we'll see, of course. Um, if I don't, I will let you know. I'll go up on Discord and say, hey, I can't do it. But at this point, I do have work I got to get get to now and here in a little bit. But um, yeah, it's it's definitely um, uh, it's been it's been a long road together. But I love. I'm very passionate about this uh, this kind of stuff. And we're going to talk more about. Like I said, we're going to talk about. Um, ancillary chords, chords that are outside the key. Um, but uh, for initially, I just wanted to stay, and we may talk more about this, come up with some more progressions, maybe more examples. I have to be careful about doing too many examples uh, because, uh, oh, no worries, Kathy. Um, I, I have to be careful not to play too much of a song or else we're going to get in trouble. Um, and uh, so, I, and I always encourage people to write because I think writing is great therapy. Um, probably like Pepper does stand up for therapy. <laughs> uh, and I used to write a lot of songs. Uh, when back in the day, I wrote um, for my band that Beth and I had, and for my band per, per, uh, prior to that, um, I wrote all the songs, like lyrics, melodies, chords. I even wrote the parts out. Like here's what I want the bass to do. Here's what you know. You try to get the drummer to do what you want him to do. Um, and yeah, sorry, I ditched my nose. Um, but I generally don't, I, you know, I had, when I was 100% responsible for my songs and they were my babies and don't change a word or a note or anything, I had zero success. It wasn't until I started collaborating with other writers that I started to see success. And, and again, part of that is that songwriting is actually quite a, Songwriting slash arranging slash producing slash recording slash playing guitar slash mixing slash mastering. Those are all individually different skills. And songwriting, on, you know, can be everything from creating a groove to creating a beat to writing a melody to writing a lyric to, you know, to writing a string arrangement. There's so much involved in it that it's impossible for one person to be good at all of those things. It's very rare that... Someone, I mean, Todd Rundgren, maybe, <laughs> you know, I can name a couple, Bruce Springsteen, you know, 
I could name some people that could write a song and record and produce it and release it and be fine by themselves. But it's pretty rare. Trent Reznor, maybe. Um, Prince could totally do it. Prince was the master at it. However, it's very, very rare. And so I didn't start getting success until I started collaborating with others. <laughs> and one of the reasons for that success is that I'm, I guess you could say, I mean, I was born in 1961, so I'm going to be 59 this next month. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> um, and, and next month will be my 50th anniversary of playing guitar. I started playing guitar 50 years ago uh, next month. Um, but I kind of consider myself a child of the 80s, right? Because that's kind of, or the 70s, you might, you know, kind of when you grew up. So my melodies, and I really got into music and particularly into writing in the 80s. And that's when I was really listening to songs and stuff. So my melodies, if not my lyrics, but particularly my melodies that I come up with, my melodic ideas, tend to be fairly well rooted in the 80s. And so it's hard for me to write a melody that a 15-year-old kid today can relate to. Um, and a melody that a pop artist would want to sing. So I don't even bother, let alone a lyric. That's even less likely to be able to write a lyric that a kid's going to want to sing. And sometimes you can, you can tell a song, um, a pop song that's made the radio, particularly, you know, One Hit Wonders, where they're often crafted songs, you know, where it's like, oh, you could tell it was a bunch of old guys sat in a room and wrote this perfect quote-unquote song, and it was a big hit, and that was it. The end of it. Um... I think a lot of people thought that with Justin and Baby. I don't think anyone thought Justin was going to be as big as he was. Uh, they thought Baby was going to be a one-hit wonder, and that was pretty much it. But I know the guys that wrote Baby, and, um, you know, it was definitely intended to be written for a young kid. I mean, the lyrics would tell you that. Um, but, the, um, uh, but the sensibility of the song is pretty, pretty, uh, uh, pretty contemporary for the time, right? Uh, let's see. It's a, <laughs> it's a, you know, um, do I, am I going to do a special 50 year anniversary stream? Maybe. I wish I still had that guitar. I don't have my first two guitars. The, the, I don't know what, it was some form of classical. It wasn't a Ramirez. It was, uh, you know, some cheap classical my dad bought me, uh, three quarter size, I think. And then my parents bought me and then I bought or I got for my birthday, maybe my 11th birthday, I got a 12 string, which almost made me want to almost made me quit guitar. So, uh, but yeah, I could, I'll, 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 I'll consider that. Remind me as we get close. Um, Leo, were you saying those before I said them or were you saying those to me as I said, uh, but yeah, there, there are definitely people that can do everything, um, and, and so I would, I would say there's definitely a few of those. But there are others that if they didn't have their better half or third or quarter or fifth, uh, like I think the Beatles are a perfect example. I think if they didn't have George Martin, um, you know, if Ringo wasn't playing drums, would the Beatles have been as big? I don't know. I'm a huge Ringo fan. I had drummer, I had drummer friends that were like really into Neil Peart and they hated Ringo. <laughs> and I'm like, really? I mean, the thing I, that amazed me about Ringo, and it may not have been totally Ringo, it might have been Paul, because I hear Paul, somebody asked John Lennon, who's the, you know, is, is, is Ringo the best drummer in the Beatles? And, and John said, well, he's not even the best drummer in the Beatles. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but... Oh, yeah, we could, I could do something like that. What day of the week is uh, July? Well, okay, then I have to, then you have to know when my birthday is. Which I guess you can find out July 10th. It's not hard. Um, but the, uh, um, yeah, so, I, you know, now granted, Paul may have been a better drummer for the Beatles, but had he, you know, the best drummer in the Beatles, but had he been the drummer, you know, would they have gone, you know, if, if Paul was the drummer instead of up front, that wouldn't have worked either. So it was kind of a, it was kind of the perfect storm, right? Uh, the, the sum of the parts is greater than, no, the, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. That's so often the case. Um, I can rarely think of a case where that's not, I mean, maybe Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, but even them, they were originally in different bands and then they got together. Um, uh, yep, 
Baby is one six four five. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There's the there's the bookend to the lesson exactly. Um, in fact, if you listen to the acoustic version, well, it's it's me and this guitar. Let me see if I can find that on YouTube and I'll post it. I was just thinking, oh, the squeal's gone, but no, it's because I turned off the speaker. <laughs> uh, yeah, here it is. Add. So, let's see. Oh, and this is actually, this one's actually legit. So if you listen to this, I make, a, I don't make anything, but because I just played on it. Oh, dang it. All right. Got it. Got it. Stop. It's crazy. So we have a curfew again tonight. Uh, but it's 9 o'clock instead of 6 o'clock, so we'll see. Hopefully. It's a Friday. Okay, well, that'll be fun. I should be around, Lord willing. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take off. With the alarm, that, that alarm was not in the broadcast. That was, yeah, right, more riots, yeah. Uh, I used to try to learn the songs of the Beatle albums, yeah. And, and that's a great study is to try to figure out the songs. So many of them are not, um, I'm in California, Shane. Um, so many of the um, uh, Beatle songs are, you know, not particularly guitar-centric. Um and or they're very riff oriented, or um, they're on piano, and so like Lady Madonna or Let It Be is a fairly easy one. A Lady Madonna is a little tougher one to kind of sell on guitar, but you can certainly always try to figure out. I mean, it'd be a phenomenal exercise to, with your ear, figure out every Beatles song. And I think if if you're smart, you would start on the first record and work your way up because the first record is going to be more of those doo wop type progressions. Um, but anyway, I was talking about Ringo, and one of the things I really, really like about Ringo is so often you, you listen to bands, I, I, I use the example of Coldplay because I just feel like every Coldplay song is, you know, and I know it's not, but it sounds like the same drum beat on every freaking song, and that's what makes it a Coldplay song. Um, and the beat, uh, uh, Ringo never did the same drum beat on any two songs. Never. And that was back when everybody was going, boom, pop, pop, boom, pop, boom, tap, pop, boom, pop, you know, doing the, Ringo even does his head thing like that. Uh, but he never, you know, he did that probably on a song, but he, then he did it on one song and then he would do a different pattern. He never, I love like the, the drum pattern to um, a Ticket to Ride. That's a great one. Um, and again, some of these, he, he was, he was, playing drums very musically. He was letting the music inspire the drum. He's not like, okay, you guys are going to play with my metronome. No, he was like, and again, some of those may be things where Paul said, do this. I wouldn't doubt that at all. John, maybe sometimes. George, probably not. But I'm sure Paul would have had said many times, um, do this. <laughs> Which reminds me of my student in London. Uh, he was like, can we learn... Uh, 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 Blackbird. I said, sure, yeah, we can learn that. He goes, he goes, yeah, that was written by my friend's grandpa. <laughs> and I went, wait, what? He goes, he goes, yeah, my friend. And I went, oh yeah, that's right. Your mom knows Stella McCartney. I forgot. You're fr they're, fr they're friends. So like, <laughs> my students friends with Stella McCartney's kids, and they go over to the house, and there's Paul sitting at the piano playing like stuff. Can you imagine? Oh my gosh, I would love to just hang out. Uh, it would be so much fun. I should find out where you guys all live and then just show up one day and surprise you and then leave. I hear Bill, Bill Murray does that. He'll show up at weddings. He showed up at a party at somebody's house and did their dishes and then left. And I think that's like the freaking coolest thing. If I were famous, I would totally do that because... Because... You just, it was a, the, a gift that no one else can give. You just gave everyone at that party a story for the rest of their lives. They're going to say, I kid you not, and people won't even believe them. But isn't that awesome? 
fact, I think there's a movie about him or a documentary about him. I got to look it up. Someone was telling me about it last night. Uh, that's uh, we had dinner last night with some friends, and they were telling us about that. So, uh, yeah, that's my that's my story right now. <laughs> Let's see. Um, ba -dum -ba -dum. I learned by ear easier. In fact, that that interfered with learning to write. Well, then that's my son's problem too. It's like he, his ear is so good. My ear is so bad actually um, that for me, I'd much rather have music. And um, my son is like, you re give him the music, and he's like, oh, can you just play it for me once? And I play it for him once, and he plays it. It's like that, you know. He's like that kid, and so um, so that's. Uh, Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, eat a peach. I'm just going to show up at someone's party and go in the kitchen, do dishes, and walk out <laughs> in handcuffs. <laughs> oh, man, in our old apartment building where we used to live and manage, the the first manager, she, she would walk by and look in everybody's kitchen in the windows, and she'd look in the kitchen, and if they had dishes in their sink, she would go in there, let herself in their apartment and do the dishes because she didn't want the building to get bugs. I was like, yeah. When I was managing, I'm like, heck no, I'm not doing that. You can just have bugs. Uh, let's see. He bartended a story, right? I saw, well, I saw a video of him singing at a wedding. Like, and no one knew him at the wedding. He just showed up and sang a song at the wedding, which is brilliant. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, door will open here. Uh, love it, have you pop in. Um, yeah, so, yeah, your, your ear will, if you've got a really good ear, it will probably slow you down on your reading, which is fine. What difference does it make? Um, you know, um, I, my, my, my stepsister, she could play classical pieces. She couldn't read them, but she could, she could figure them out and pretty much get them pretty close to right. So, um, I'm famous. Yeah, I know, right? I'm, I'm a, a legend in my spare time. Yeah, okay, so I'll shoot for Vermont in the summertime. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> Eat a peach, yeah, that, that would be freaking hilarious. Uh, if the border ever opens up, come on up. Oh, Kat, where are you? In, in, uh, uh, we have an amazing live lab in my department that's one of the best acoustics around. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. Are you, I'm assuming you're in Canada? Is the border closed? I can go to Canada. It's not closed. I just saw someone was down here from Canada. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's very cool. Oh, Paul, oh, really? Paul lives in a building in New York. That's crazy. Well, I bet he's not there now. <laughs> Jim's like, Bonnie's like, yes, please. Come and do our dishes. Uh, dishwasher's broke. <laughs> well, that's, we never had a dishwasher in our apartment for 32 years. We didn't even have a laundry room. So, I mean, we had a laundry room, but... Beth had to share two washers and two dryers with 30 other families. So when we got our house, it was like, I said, this is going to be your favorite thing. It's like, she's like, oh, it's just a washer and dryer. And then like a month in, she's like, oh my God, I love my washer and dryer so much. And then she never thought she'd want a dishwasher, but now she loves that. So we have a dishwasher too. So uh, He ate someone's fries and told him, no one will believe you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They kind of treat him like Bigfoot. Yeah, that's awesome. I I, I got to look it up. I'll, I'll find it because it, it'll be in his IMDb, I'm sure. But it might be under, not under actor. It'll be as himself, play, uh, which is a, you know, a different category. It might be really hard to find because it would also include all of the interviews he did. But Oh, really? Well, it's essential if I have to go to the board, Canada. So I know Beth and I are talking about, I want to go to, I want to go to Europe. <laughs> I know everybody's like, what? But I'm like. It's so cheap right now. Everybody's like, it's like when we went, we went to Paris right after 9-11 and practically, we, well, we flew for free and we stayed for, I think it was 800 bucks for the week for the apartment and we, the, with the kids and we took all three kids and we had it was so much fun. It was so great. I mean, you saw people with, you saw a policeman with machine guns, so that was weird. But other than that, it was the same Paris as it always had been. So anyway. Uh, but we'll, we'll, um, you know, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So anyway, I'm going to sign out. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. What was our peak? Do you know anyone see what it looks like? It's 43 now. Pretty high. Looks like 48. That's pretty good. 
So anyway, I'll, I'll let you know what that was. I don't know if we got any new subscribers, but hopefully we did. And thank you again for, uh, um, yeah. No, I have a very patient wife. Waited 30 years plus years for a house. Married to a guitar player. If you marry a guitar player, you better be patient. So she knew. Um, but I will, um, she knew what she was getting into. I will see you, uh, today's Wednesday, I will see you Friday, okay? God bless you. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.